if you hear any loud crashing noises, my puppy's on a just has gone a bit mental and she's chewing. Oh, okay. everything. So if you hear anything going on in the background, I'm not being robbed or anything. So there's nothing to be concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I watched the Dorman uh, as just yesterday and I really enjoyed it. It's really good fun. I'm just one, one of those people where if I see John Reno in a movie, I'm already sold uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. He's incredible. <laughs> um, what, what was it that attracted you initially to getting involved in this particular project? Well, it was, um, well, it was an action movie and I hadn't done an action movie before. So that was like the big thing. Like, you know, I wanted to you know, do stunts and all the crazy stuff, explosions, whatever. And so that was, that was like the big thing that I was like, oh man, I have to do this movie because, you know, I hadn't done anything like it before. Yeah, how important would you say it is at this stage in your career to to try new things and to show off kind of different skill sets because it's so it must be so hard in this industry to to avoid getting pigeonholed sometimes it's just kind of just happens to so many actors is it quite when you choose roles do you almost choose parts that do feel quite different to the last to show off your your range yeah i mean i i would i would say so and like a lot of times you know i'm just happy to get any part but um you know i i especially like doing ones that are different you know like this um action hadn't done before done a lot of like drama comedy whatever so it was new but you know a lot of times it's just like getting the part but when you do get the opportunity to do something different it's you know all it's incredible yeah it must be quite a difficult balance i guess because you kind of want to map out a certain career path for yourself and a certain type of role or a certain type of project but at the same time when you're kind of starting off exposure and opportunity is still such a huge part of it is that how, how have you kind of navigated your way around the kind of selection of roles in choosing things that get you out there but also choosing things that are kind of in line with your career aspirations yeah, well, I think where I am right now, I, I don't, you know, I don't, it's not really about, you know, totally choosing what I want to do or what I don't want to do. You know, it's more about just getting the opportunity to do anything, you know, because it is difficult. You go on like 100,000 auditions, you know, you get like a few. Um, so, you know, I think, I think right now it's just about trying to do as much as I can do so that, you know, one day I would get the opportunity to choose what I'd like to do, whether I'd like to go like action or you know, drama or whatever direction. Having done action, is it something you'd like to to do more of, would yeah. you say? Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I think it was, you just, it's, it's, you're always, you're always doing something. I kind of like that. You're not like sitting around, you're, you're, oh, it's like, okay, you have to be careful because this guy's about to shoot a gun or, you know, you're about to get flipped 30 feet, you know, in the air or whatever. It's just always kind of cool. You know, it always kind of keeps you on your toes. Yeah, so, so tell me a little bit about your character in, in the doorman. How does he fit into into that story? Yeah, yeah. So, so well, the doorman is about a marine who returns home and uh, and she finds a job in a New York City apartment building working as a doorman. And one night, these uh, bad guys, these art thieves, come in and break into the building and take a family hostage. Um, I'm part of that family, and I kind of escape them. I, I escape the bad guys, and I kind of help Ruby Rose navigate through the apartment building to, you know, kill all the bad guys, pretty much. Yeah. How how do you think you in in real life you'd fare in that situation? Because I've got to be honest, if that was me, I'd be the first person hiding under the bed. Uh, yeah, I think I, I do. I'd probably be the yeah. I'd probably be hiding under the bed. I don't know. Um, I, I mean, it's kind of an extreme situation, so I'm not sure I could say. But I would definitely be, I mean, if there was a gun pointing at me, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll sit here and do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I've, um, I've interviewed Ruby before, and she's a brilliant actress, so committed to her craft. What was she like to, to collaborate with on this project? Because you share most of your scenes with her. I, yeah, I do. Um, it was great. Um, she, was, she, was, she was super nice and funny, and I was always trying to, I was always trying to, I was always trying to prank her with this little plastic spider. And because uh, she said she was scared of spiders and she was always telling me about, oh, these big elaborate pranks that she would pull on people. And so I always unsuccessfully tried to get her with the spider. So we had a lot of fun together. There must have been once where you successfully pranked her. Surely, surely she wasn't that canny. Oh, no, she, she was. Um, my pranking skills are just nowhere compared to hers. So I'd always hear these stories. But yeah, no, I not not once. You know, and I tried. I really did. 
<laughs> and the, the, what about Jean Reno? So I've never actually met Jean Reno before, but I went to um, a press junket in Paris a few years ago. And in the hotel that uh, the press junket was taking place, he was just sat outside having a coffee. And it's one of the coolest images I've ever seen with my own eyes, you know, just seeing Jean Reno in a Parisian cafe. Um, how is he to work with? Because I mean, you look at films like Leon, The Professional. I mean, he, right. he's, he's an icon, isn't he, of modern cinema? Oh, yeah, totally. He's. Um, he's really incredible and he was once again super nice super fun to hang out with he's super into tennis so uh while we were filming the movie we uh we watched the french open together which was a lot of fun um and it was it was you know he was just he was cool i mean he was nice like and it's just one of those guys that you, you know he's just like oh wow that's john Renault. so it's kind of always funny that you're just sitting next to him watching the french open or whatever you know or doing a scene together but do you, do you almost have to to forget about their prestige in the industry when you're just on on in a in a scene because it must be so hard when you're kind of opposite someone so they're distinguishable and then you sort of suddenly you just have to blank out I guess everything you've ever thought of that person to to be yeah, in the character yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly it's like okay you, you just gonna you just gonna have to forget it because it's like if not you're like oh my god uh, am I doing good am I not like what, what's going on because he's like you know he's just he's you know yeah he's he's great and you, you mentioned, obviously, it being set in a New York apartment block, but am I right in thinking this was shot in Romania? Yeah, yeah it was, which was, uh, it was funny because it was, it was in like this old section that had kind of these old looking kind of like New York apartment buildings. Um, but it was, it was really great. So, I mean, yeah, I filmed in Romania. It was my first time, you know, to East, like Eastern Europe, which was, which was really great. And I just, I wasn't expecting this, but the food there was just incredible. Um, like I had some of the, like, I mean, the best hamburger in my life. Um, and it was really a pretty country, like going around the countryside, we went to Transylvania and we saw Dracula's castle and the Romanian royal family's palace and stuff like that. So it was a really great experience working there. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. My next question was genuinely going to be, what was the food like in Romania? I love finding yeah. out about the food. That's good to oh, know. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was really cool. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, it was funny. It wasn't just like they had Romanian food or whatever. They had Japanese, great Japanese, great, um, Mediterranean, everything, even American food. I think they do American food better than Americans do American <laughs> food. Like it was really great. So have you, have you missed traveling this year? Because I guess with the nature of your work, you've always, and I don't just mean traveling abroad, but even just traveling around the States to shoot. But obviously with lockdown and, and stuff, has that been a side to, to this this year that has been quite difficult for you? Because also I know you've, you're obviously a, a very, very international background as well. So I'm assuming you've, you've traveled a lot for, across your life. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have. And that's like, it's like my favorite thing to do. And it's always like, you know, a bummer. Like I was going to go to, uh, I was going to go to Japan this year, right before during for summer and, and, and we're also going to go to Europe. And it was just unfortunate that we weren't able to do that. Uh, so yeah, it's been, it was, a uh, it's definitely been a bummer not being able to travel. Have you been um, like auditioning in lockdown? How have you found the kind of that process? Is it all, I guess it's all been online, but have you, have you kind of adjusted to that, to that sort of new way of life? Well, it was already starting to move that way. Like everything was beginning to be more self tapes, you know, where you, you, you tape yourself doing the audition instead of going into the room. And so it was kind of like, an, it was, it was actually an easy transition because it, it was already going that way. Like people, you were starting to go into the room less and less. So I would say it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Do, do you quite enjoy that sort of auditions? Because I've always imagined that no matter how sort of like um, professional an actor is and no matter how sort of good they are, it's sort of just not sort of um, looking at everything else in the world and just focusing on the character. There must always be a sense of self-consciousness that comes with self-taping, I would imagine. Yeah, because I mean, you're not like, you know, when you, when you walk into an audition room, you kind of, you know, you do your thing and then you leave, you know, so you gave it your all and then you can kind of, I mean, you're, you're, of course, always criticize yourself, but not so much when you have to choose which tape you want to do, but then you didn't do that right, so then you redo it, and then you wind up doing it like, you know, you wind up spending like three hours on this thing, and then, yeah, so I mean, I think there's like a lot of, you know, you're, you're constantly like judging yourself more so when, when you're watching yourself and having to select what you want to do, but it also gives you the opportunity to, you know, give your best performance, you know, um, I think, because you can refine what you do based on, you know, what you see yourself doing. So we, we sort of touched upon uh, just briefly sort of your upbringing, but so you obviously you were raised, you were raised in Singapore, is that right? Because I mean, I love, love, I went on to that country a few years ago and I just had the best, 
the best time. I really love the people and the culture and the food. If we're going to talk about food, I mean, it doesn't get. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. So I was, um, I was born in Japan and uh, at the age of three, I moved to Singapore and I spent eight years there and it was incredible. I mean, it's such a multicultural place. Like it's just a melting pot of, of like all of these different cultures. And it, like you said, food, just incredible food from all around the world. And uh, it's super clean and just a really nice place to be. Yeah, yeah. I remember I didn't see any chewing gum on the streets. It was great. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a you know whole like ten thousand dollar fine for you know chewing gum or whatever. Yeah. So did you did you know you wanted to be an actor from quite from quite a young age? Was it something that you were sort of keen on doing right from from childhood? I suppose. Yeah, um, I started when I was uh, I started when I was six in Singapore, and it was it was a funny story. I saw my friends picture on a bus well, as it was driving by and I was like oh my god how did he get his picture on a bus I want my picture on a bus so I kind of started doing like modeling and, and whatever uh when I was young there and it kind of turned into there was an NYU film school there um and I started doing little shorts there for for, for different students and then that kind of developed into more acting and and then I got an agent in LA or actually I, I did a Billy Crystal audition and I, you know, I met with him at Billy Crystal. And then from that, the casting director called up an agent and I got an agent and then it kind of just all went from there. And then I started coming to LA more until we eventually moved there. Uh, like five, I don't know how many years ago. I kind of lost track of time, but yeah. Yeah. How was, how was Billy Crystal? Uh, he was, he was great. It was a long time ago. So my memory is kind of foggy, but he was funny, super nice. Yeah. Yeah, because I, st I still think that When Harry Met Sally is in the, is in the top five films of all time. <laughs> fight anyone who's yeah. um, But I was wondering about yourself as an actor, because I've got a cousin who's getting into acting and he's kind of doing commercials and little sort of understudies of the theatre and stuff like that. And I think he's, I sort of, someone asked him recently, what do you do for, for a living? And he, he was quite hesitant to say actor, because I think it's one of those jobs where it's not like you get a certificate that says you are now a doctor, you know? It's, and I just right. wondered if you've had that moment yet where you feel like, hang on a minute, I am actually an actor. This is, this is my career. This is, this is what I can define myself as. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, um, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I, think, I guess, um, I don't think like, you know, I mean, I'm just thinking because I haven't had to, you know, make like a living acting yet. You know, I haven't had to like support myself. I'm, I'm, I'm 16. So I haven't, you know, really had to say that, you know, that's what I do for a job. But I mean, it is, I mean, it is kind of, you know, I mean, I do do it. I do do it like kind of consistently. And so, yeah, I guess I, you know, I guess just by doing it consistently, you can say that you know, you're an actor and that's what you do, you know. Yeah. Have, have you have you been with sort of balancing kind of school and and, and work because I mean when I was 16 it was uh, the, the idea of like working and making money was sort of in the future it wasn't ever something I, I considered but I guess because of your the nature of your work it's something that's kind of been a bit ac accelerated hasn't it I suppose yeah um, well I'm, I'm homeschooled so that's helped a lot you know and um and it's good because it allows me to kind of say okay I'm going to do this movie now and I'll try and get as much school done while I'm doing this movie but, you know, at least I'll be able to cram a bunch right before the end of the year. You know, I had that opportunity to kind of set my own schedule, which is extremely helpful when you can't really do a ton of school while you're doing a movie. You know, you, you just can't. So you kind of have to, you kind of have to set it aside and do it another time. And how, how are you watching yourself on, on screen? Have you kind of got used to, to seeing yourself? Can you watch a movie you're in and kind of emotionally invest in it? Or is it still a bit tricky for you? Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't like watching myself. Um, it's like one of the things, I just, I don't, it's just weird, you know? Um, I mean, I do it just so that I can be like, okay, what did I do there? You know, just to kind of help myself. So, you know, if I see a mistake that I made, I can correct it or, you know, just different things like that. But I don't, I don't enjoy doing it, no. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your kind of, I know, obviously, you know, it's very early days, but have you got kind of aspirations of, of a, ty a type of actor you want to be? Or is, is there another actor that you kind of want to emulate or like a, a trajectory that you really admire from, from one of your kind of peers? I don't know. Like I said, I like doing action movies. I just, I, I like doing the stunts and acting. And like, you know, it's kind of a cool combination. So um, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not quite sure yet because... I'm not like, cause it hasn't really, I mean, I've thought about it, but not like seriously. It's one of those things just kind of in the back of your head. Oh, you know, what could I do? But I think I'd like to do 
I think I guess I'd like to do action movies. I think, um, but you know, I also like doing drama movies and like you know, doing the whole serious aspect, you know, to that that whole thing versus just like blowing stuff up. But blowing stuff up is fun. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, But because but, yeah, was it obviously when you make a movie that's kind of a big action film of you know props and sort of weapons and kind of fight sequences and choreography and stuff like that? Is it harder sometimes to access the dramatic? Do you, side to the character do you almost have to sometimes forget about everything that's kind of going on because I guess in a drama it's kind of that's your only focus but I guess on a set with all the sort of routines and stuff you've got other things you've got to try and think about at the same time yeah um that, that's true but I also think that because you have these kind of like extreme like you know oh an explosion is about to like 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 if there is an explosion you can really play off of that you know there is safety stuff but when that thing blows up you're not at that moment, you're not thinking, oh, I hope I'm like, you know, you're just, oh my God, that thing just blew up. You're not thinking, oh, yeah, I'm 30 feet apart. I can't do that. And I can blah, blah, blah. So that way it kind of helps. Or like, you know, someone shoots a gun, you know, it's loud. It's it's not a real gun, but it's a blank. You know, there was, um, there was a scene in Norman where, where a guy fires a gun right next to my head. And, you know, there was all the safety stuff. But when he actually shot the gun, I was just like, oh my God, that was super loud. And like, you do just saw the gun next to my face. So I think it really, with those extreme circumstances, you can really play off of it. Yeah. So my, my final question really is if, if you've got anything kind of in the pipeline, is there any kind of projects or anything that you've, you, you've kind of got underway or that you're sort of looking forward to in the future? Yeah, well, I'm actually, I'm actually in Canada right now filming, uh, filming a movie. Uh, it's called uh, Escape the Field. And it's about kind of six strangers who get thrown into a cornfield first time filming me in a cornfield, which has been, which has been really cool. And they kind of have to get, they have to figure out how to escape, escape the cornfield. Um, so that's, that's what I'm doing right now. And then I have another movie, which is like a, a World War One movie that, that I was supposed to do earlier this year, but COVID and, you know, then everything kind of got shut down. So that movies, I guess, I guess that's, you know, kind of in something's going on with it. I'm not quite sure. I've heard some stuff, but yeah. So I don't know. Hopefully that will get started back up and I you know, can do that too, which would be great. Yeah. So just quickly then before I go, I was just wondering, because obviously you said you're shooting at the moment. How, how has it been shooting with the kind of new guidelines in place? So I'm assuming there's still, it does, I mean, I'm assuming it feels a bit different to, to how it used to. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, I mean, there's like, there's like, you know, there's like safety precautions that everyone wants to take. You know, like there's different groups, like, you know, the actors in one groups with the hair and makeup people interact with. You know, like the camera guys are separate. Like everyone's kind of separate, and um, and everyone's wearing masks, and we have to get tested uh, three times a week. Um, and it's and it's it's funny. It's like in in Canada they have they like in the in the U.S. I think other places like there's this one where you just get the swab, and it's kind of just like in your nose right here. They just do two sides. In Canada they stick it all the way up. And so it's like, you know, it's like, okay, you have to get tested today. And like, oh, great. And it's up. It's all the I I had that that exact same COVID test, uh, the one that goes right up your nose. And oh, all yeah. I have to say is it could be handy if you've got to pretend to be crying in a seat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My eyes just yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's definitely it is definitely uncomfortable. But it's actually funny. It's like you kind of get used to it. You know, because because we are doing it like three times a week, and we've been doing it for like multiple weeks now. So, so I I don't know what's going on, but for some reason it is it does get slightly better as you do it more. But but yeah, definitely I definitely definitely would be convenient if I could do my COVID test right before I have to do my big crying scene. <laughs> well, maybe they can that, that's what they can be in the in the new world, the post COVID world. Um, well, thank you so much for your time today, Julian. It's been a real pleasure speaking. Yeah, to you. yeah. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!